What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another episode of the Premier League's perspective, which is the review of the Predict the Prem, where me and my brother go head to head in predicting Premier League outcomes. And the way the scoring works is five points for a completely correct score, one point for a correct result, and the star man as well, which is five points for a goal and three points for an assist. And once you pick a player, you cannot pick them again for the entirety of the season. The scores on the doors at the moment are four. Four, two to Sim uh, and with another mm. big weekend of Premier League action let's get straight into it and let's start off with the first game of the weekend which was Aston Villa against Everton in a very poor game at Villa Park with two very poor sides coming up against each other it did finish 2-1 to Aston Villa on the day Sim went 1-0 to Villa I went 1-1 so Sim gains a point for this one uh, but how did you see this game? Yeah, as you say, it wasn't a very good game uh, from both sides. I thought both sides were really poor. Um, just one was poorer than the other. I think that was the general gist of how things played out. Ollie Watkins um, with two assists. and I he think he had, a, yeah, he had a pretty decent game. Danny Ings with a nice Picked finish. him on the wrong week, didn't you? Yeah, honestly. <laughs> got two assists this week. Didn't even start last week. But um, Danny Ings uh, opened the scoring with a really nice finish. Mm. And then it was kind of just trudging along. Everton didn't really have a route back into the game. They had Damari Gray. I think a front three of Gray, Gordon, and um, I can't remember who the other player was but like just not a very good front three and it definitely showed Villa pretty much dealt with it with ease and um, they got the second late on when Deer came on and just about squeezed in a second and then it was actually funny though because that new signing for Everton Onana Kate comes on does an awful mistake in the first like, minute or so leading to Villa second but then he's turned out to be Everton's biggest threat in the last uh, five minutes and he got a really good assist for Dinia's own goal and um, he was there but he, he was look like most likely to um, maybe bring uh, Everton back in the game and they nearly did right at the end they had a couple of opportunities to make it 2-2 but it was a bit too little too late um, but I think watching both these teams I think both these managers could be under pressure yeah. like very soon completely agree and uh, back on Luca Dean for a second I believe his last two goals in the Premier League was um, first of all the own goal against Aston Villa um, for Everton and last year uh, his last goal was an own goal for Aston Villa against Everton. Uh, yeah. so it's funny how the way things work yeah, out. Yeah, how it? the footballing world is, has, has a way of uh, coming around like that a lot of the times. But yeah, look, Lampard, two start after just escaping relegation last season by the skin of his teeth, really. Uh, two defeats now. Um, haven't had, look, they've lost with Charleston, haven't really replaced him um, so far. Dominic Calvert-Lewin's out for still another month at least. Um, they're looking to make some signings. And I think Onana, that does look decent. But, I mean, is he? How, how much pressure is he under, do you think? A lot. A lot of pressure. And um, they just don't have the squad to, to cope uh, with the Premier League week in, week out. I don't believe they do. I mean, they're looking at Anthony Gordon as pretty much their main man now, mm. which is crazy. Uh, to talk about a player coming through the youth. And yeah, look, he's a good player. And apparently he's off to Chelsea or something they now. They just rejected so, I mean, a bid, oh, 40 million. So if Chelsea keep going with more bids and stuff like that, you know, it's not beyond all realms of possibility that he does end up at Chelsea. Up, they would have to have someone lined up, you have to assume. You, yeah, you'd have to assume that. But will he be good enough, first and foremost? And second of all, I think... I, I predict everything to go down this season. Um, but I think La one of Lampard or Gerrard could be the first to go. They really could. Yeah, I think Gerrard, his record's coming under scrutiny now, even though he hasn't been in the job that long. But um, I think the definitely that honeymoon period that he had is well and truly over now, but for sure. And he's, I think Villas fans are starting to get on his back a bit. And, you know, they've got an all right squad there. They've got some good players in that squad, Aston Villa, and they should mm. be doing better than they're doing because their form at the moment, when you take into account the back end of last season as well, is nowhere near good enough. Yeah, but they did win, so fair enough. Yeah. Mm. Um, all right, let's move on to Arsenal against Leicester. 4-2 to Arsenal on the day. Both of us going 2-0, so both of us gaining a point uh, for this one. Uh, but it was pretty much total domination uh, from Arsenal in this one. Gabriel Jesus with two goals and two assists. And... Um, slotted the foxes away really yeah uh it was a jesus show let's be honest he was absolutely impeccable uh i have to give it to him he really um stole the show in, the, in this one but i would say it was total domination especially for the first half um they, uh, jesus got a couple of goals uh well the first one really nice finish or well, did take a bit of a deflection or the second one was a back post from the corner and then 
Um, the penalty was rightly overturned. Vardy took a dive right at the end of the first half. And that was, um, I think, VAR probably got a good intervention there. But in the second half, I think there were a few chinks in the armour for Arsenal. Obviously, Saliba with a really poor own goal, um, which was, uh, w you know, which was a miscommunication with him and Ramsdale. And that and that got um, less back in the game. And then Arsenal may potentially getting a bit fortunate back on the other end because Ward making an absolute cl uh, clangor um, for the third goal, very, like it, within it 30 seconds. Learned. We'll give you a goal if you give us a goal kind of thing. Yeah. It's just like so frustrating. Every time Leicester scored and tried to get back into the game, Arsenal just went up the other end and scored. Yeah. Um, so I think Ward, yeah, I think Ward was, uh, he, what was he doing for that third goal? Going with one hand and just, it was an absolute calamity uh, mm. from him. They went 3-1. Then Leicester got, again got back in the game. They brought on a Hinacho, Daka, they put some firepower on. Madison was getting more involved. And then um, obviously, yeah, they got, they, got the, um, they got another goal, which I don't think Ramsdale covered himself in any glory with that finish as well as a poor poor piece of goalkeeping from my point of view mm. went under him but again 30 seconds later later Arsenal going the other end a really really good goal by Martinelli so I think Arsenal it's a bit of a weird it's like they've had a, obviously a very good start to the season two wins out of two um, and two I think performances where they deserve to win probably but you'd also have to say you know in the Palace game they were very much under the cosh for large periods and then in Leicester they had some they had some clangers in there and they had um, some chinks in the armour so good start but I think definitely were, uh, work in progress in some ways for Arsenal yeah it seems like with Arsenal so far this season both games is as same kind of theme where in the first half they go full pelt play really well in the second half they come under the cosh a little bit mm. um, I think they need to figure out a way of how to play for 90 minutes because we so haven't they seen don't. that just yet yeah let's hope <laughs> they um, but anyway let's move on to Brighton against Newcastle it finished nil nil Sim went 1-1 I went 2-1 mm. to Newcastle so Sim gaining another point here uh, what did you make out of this game First yeah, of the season, I yeah, I wasn't watching it, but um, I, from what I saw, Brighton were the very much the dominant team. Yeah, Nick Pope were. was uh, the more um, busy goalkeeper. Really, he won. really good performance from Nick Pope in this. Yeah, game. you know, some really good saves, mm. didn't he? And it shows how important um, having the, uh, that new goalkeeper signing could be for Newcastle. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's a point that both teams, I don't think, will be that disappointed with in the grand scheme of things. Uh, maybe it was the heat, you know, contributing to uh, maybe a, the nil-nil performance, uh, nil-nil. But um, I think, but I think both teams, it's a decent point for both. And I mm. think Eddie Howe will be fairly happy going to a difficult away ground like Newcastle, um, Brighton, and getting a point. And I think Graham Potter will know how well Newcastle are playing right now. So even though they probably should have won. He's not going to be that unhappy with the I point. I think you've got to give credit to Brighton for shutting out Newcastle because they're clearly one of the four teams in the Premier League when you take into account the second half of last season as well. So to keep them out is, um, is I think uh, that he'll be proud of that performance, Brighton. Mm. Uh, moving on to Man City against Bournemouth, finished 4-0. Sim went 3-0. I went 4-0, so the first five points of the season comes my way. Uh, Sim gets a point as well for this one. And you know what? It was 4-0, but before Man City scored their first goal, it literally could have been 6-0 um, to Man City. It was an onslaught in that first half, and the game was over at halftime, 3-0. Mm -hmm. um, and Man City pretty much took their foot off the gas for that second half and strolled through to a 4-0 victory. Yeah, disappointed Haaland didn't get more goals, but um, yeah. he got one assist at least. But he only had eight touches. Yeah, which which is interesting, isn't it? Because if there was a di if that was another striker, maybe they would get criticism for that. But because maybe Romelu Haaland Lukaku. got the assist, exactly, or you know, but because um, Haaland got the assist, maybe he maybe covers over what was a fairly disappointing it's because display. they won 4-0 as well like if this game would have been drawn or or a slightly closer game then maybe more would be made out of it mm. yeah but it also maybe goes to show how his lack of involvement in like the build-up play and stuff um which is something that has been questioned and maybe that's something that the city is still getting used to um, a striker like that and it is weird to say that in a 4-0 victory mm. but that's a standard city of set isn't it obviously Foden um scored a, was, was on the end of the score sheet but I think De Bruyne, what a goal he scored outside of the boot, yeah. outside, just outside the box on the run as well. Um, absolute foot man, that guy Beautiful, has. beautiful goal uh, he scored. And uh, it's a uh, uh, victory we all expected, didn't absolutely. we? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let's move on to Southampton against Leeds at St. Mary's. Sim went 2-1 to Leeds. I went 3-1 to Leeds, so zero points for both of us in this one. Uh, nil nil at half time. Rodrigo scores two goals early doors in the second half, um, and he's on mad form. Rodrigo, by the way, in the first two games of the season, grabbing three goals. Mm. 
And uh, Southampton come back from 2-0 down late in that second half. So an amazing second half there at St Mary's. Yeah, fair play to them because there is, it would have been easy for them after losing 4-1 in the first game to, you know, for their heads to drop and uh, res be resigned to another defeat. But they stood up and they um, they got back in the game. Aribo came on as a substitute and really changed the game for them. He got a goal back and um, obviously Carl Walker-Peters with a really nice finish mm. um, for the, for the equaliser. And it was a very much of a positive result in the end for Southampton. Although Leeds... Will be kicking themselves having been pretty much the better side for the best part of 70 minutes yeah. and um, being tuned up as well and letting it slip will be disappointing but they seem to be playing quite well Leeds you know a very good opening day win and then um, although they l let it go late on tuning up away at Southampton and um, playing quite fairly well so um, Leeds seem to be going on the right track I like the look of Leeds I like the look of a few of their players I mean Rodrigo is playing really well I like the look of Aronson as well um, and shockingly, uh, Pamford goes off injured after 25 minutes, which was really frustrating. But uh, we'll get into that a bit later on in the video. But let's move on to Wolves against Fulham. Um, another nil-nil draw this weekend at Molyneux. Uh, Sim went 1-1, so he gains a point. I went 1-0 to Wolves, uh, so I didn't gain anything there. But this game is going to be mostly spoken about for the missed penalty from Alexander Mitrovic in that second half and that would have gone on to get Fulham three points so unfortunate mm. there really yeah he'll be kicking himself after getting two goals on the opening day one from the spot um it, was a, it wasn't the best penalty although Joe Jose Sarr did really well to get to it and um I think Wolves will be a bit, bit disappointed that they lacked quite a bit of threat in this game and um Fulham were able to contain them fairly easily and it looked like if anyone was going to win it, it was going to be Fulham um so Wolves a lot, a lot of work to do they do have now Guedes and they signed another guy, guy um N Nunez was it? Uh, yeah, Matias, 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 Nunez. Yeah. So some decent signings coming through the door walls. Maybe that'll help them um, with their firepower. But um, uh, and, uh, two draws from the start. Of the, no, sorry, one a draw and a loss now. For the start of the season for Wolves. Um, very, uh, so they'll uh, be looking to uh, improve on that for sure because they've yeah. got a decent team, I think. Yeah, they are okay. Um, I mean, their problem always last season was scoring goals. Yeah. They've always had quite a good defence. Uh, with Connor Cody gone now, that could be an interesting see what the developments happen in their defence. But when you're looking at Fulham, um, they've had a really good start to the season. They played really well against Liverpool, should have taken all three points in that game. And uh, should have taken all three points in this game against Wolves if it wasn't for the missed penalties. So a mm. uh, really good start to the season. They'll probably be kicking themselves. They haven't got at least one three-pointer on the board just yet. Yeah, but they'll take that, I think, if you offered it to them. Yeah, probably. Wolves no, definitely. To Liverpool, definitely, two draws. definitely. But the way they're playing, you know, they'll, they'll get points on the board mm. this season. Um, let's move on to the 5.30 kickoff at the Brentford Community Stadium. 4-0 against Manchester United, which is an unbelievable uh, game of football. Uh, Sim went for 2-2. I went for 1-1. How wrong were we? I mean, wow. Brighton completely swatted Manchester United aside. Calamitous performance from Man United and David De Gea in, in especially as well. And Christian Eriksen. I mean, I've never seen him play so bad, to be honest. Yeah, um, I felt bad for him. Like, I really, I've never seen him play so bad. The mistakes that he was doing, the passing he was doing was shocking. And this Man United side are completely all over the place. They don't know what they're doing. Uh, they, they look lost. Ten Hag doesn't seem to know what he's doing. And I'm starting to get a bit of Frank De Boer vibes of uh, Eric Ten Hag at the moment. And also, not only does he not seem to be know what he's doing, I, I tell you what, when he did his post-match uh, interview, he looked worried. He genuinely looked like. Well, he how was can under you not it. when you've got a result? I know, like that. but yeah, but, and you've but got you, Liverpool to come. But next. usually, when you're a new manager, you know, you feel like you're going to be given time and stuff like that. But he like he genuinely looked like oh, he like he was in trouble. He looks a bit out of his depth, no. doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, there was it was disaster from start to finish. It started off with one of the worst goalkeeping mistakes you ever see from David De Gea with the, the with the shot from De Silva, which is like that that was Taibi kind of vibes. Yeah. That that mistake yeah. that would be one for the Christmas DVD. And then um, you got the then obviously the second goal that well, I don't know what first of all I think it's a really bad pass from De Gea into Ericsson Ericsson though should be doing a lot better shielding the ball than he does he pretty much just gives it straight to Brentford um, which is why I don't like Ericsson in that double pivot role in, that, in those things I don't think he's strong enough for that role he needs to have people covering for him I don't think you want him picking up the ball on the edge of his own area that's not what Ericsson is most useful and I don't and I don't think we would have used him that way if we would have signed him so um, I think that, that obviously cost him another that cost him a second goal the third goal was just absolutely comical from the point that it was pretty much everything everyone was saying about Lissandro Martinez rolled into one moment <laughs> throughout the whole summer I'm loving the memes about Martinez at the moment I mean but the thing is like Ten Hag did not 
take into account the height, the physicality or anything to do with Brentford. He thought he could just go play his game and physicality pretty much doesn't come into it. Yeah, I mean, the, the ball was in the air for so long. Martinez had so long to look at it and he he just got completely... Like, Ben Mee didn't even do much. He kind of just a tiny little nudge and then Martinez got nowhere near it and just a little flick on his 3-0. And I think Martinez has two games in a row now where he looks very, very suspect. He was really lucky not to give away a penalty in the first game mm. against Welbeck. And this one, he got absolutely bullied and it was horrific and then the third goal a uh, fourth goal uh, which was after what half an hour they were 4-0 down after yeah. half an hour which was a uh, one long ball United had all the possession one long ball from Brentford and they're in on goal Tony and, and Buemo linked up and it was 4-0 and it was it was embarrassing to watch absolutely embarrassing Man United don't look like anywhere near like a cohesive unit like a team playing um, uh, all in the same direction Ronaldo was throwing hissy fits left right and centre um, Rashford um, was completely completely lost um, Sancho was completely anonymous they have all this talent but they just can't seem to get a tune out of all of them and um, any, of them. any of them if you were United would you just uh, what would you do with Ronaldo if you were Ronaldo did you terminate his contract do you just pers pers uh, persist with him it's so hard it's such a hard one um, I think you I don't know I don't know. Oh, to be honest, most of Man United, like, it was it was interesting. Like a month ago, when when all this stuff came out about Ronaldo, I was talking to some United supporting friends. They were like, "Oh no, we have to keep him as our top goal scorer." All this stuff. But I talk to them now. They all want him gone. They all mm. want rid of him. Yeah, uh, they, then what would you do instead, though? They've had it. I don't know. There's there's even I don't know for how true it is. There's reports from the Athletic today suggesting that the mood with Ronaldo there is so bad that even if they just terminated him and didn't replace him, it would still be a net positive. They reckon, but I don't the know. Is, I don't like, know if I buy that. In the first game when Ronaldo didn't start, they were shocking. Yeah, and they're actually better when Ronaldo came on. So maybe just him in the dressing room is causing negativity. I don't know. That's what they're suggesting. I so yeah, know. but what do you do? Because then you're just stuck with Martial or, or Bruno as a false nine. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. Rashford up Ericsson front and back up there. You know, no, what I mean? you don't want that either. Like... So they're in a bit. They're in big trouble. And I think Ten Hag does not cut a happy figure right now. He doesn't. He doesn't seem to know what to do. The first game he's playing Ericsson as a false nine. The second game he's playing Ericsson deep down the pitch. I mean, and they're playing. They're trying to play this total football, but. I'd f I don't know if he's going to get the patience to be able to implement all that football. And as well, people know how to bully this Man United side as well. So even if they do play it, I mean, it's all well and good playing this total football in the in the Eredivisie when you're Ajax, when you're the, you know, uh, you're the big team there. But when you come to the Premier League and you've got all these strong physical uh, teams uh, getting in your face and everything, it's very, you have to be, but like... Barcelona of 2011 you to be got, able to cope with that. You've got to be Liverpool Man City standard to do that. And they're nowhere near that. Yeah. So, I don't know, look, how, look, if Ten Hag, like, like they've got Liverpool next, uh, no, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that could be a battery, although Liverpool haven't started the season well, we'll get into no, that. No, but it will be a battery. If it is a battery, it will be a battery. Like, how much pressure is this guy on? Would, would, do you is reckon, it, uh, do you reckon, we're just, is, is the shadow of Pochettino looming over him, do you reckon? Um, I think so, to be honest. And I think, some point during this season, and I th I've got a feeling it could be quite early on. That's the change that they're going to make. I, I, I think Pochettino is nailed on for that job this year. Because I, really I think do. if one man can get them playing in a in a way that can get them getting results, instead of this guy just with this philosophy. Obviously, Pochettino has his own philosophy, but. I think the philosophy of Ten Hag is very different to Pochettino. Pochettino is going to make them nasty to play against again and difficult to play against. I don't know. I don't know if Ten Hag has it in him to get to bring that kind of performance out of, a, of Man like, United at the doesn't, moment. Doesn't seem like he does have it in him. But I think that wasn't the football at Ajax. The thing is, Pochettino, when when he comes in, if he comes into Man United, he's also going to take a while to settle down, get his ideas over to the players and stuff like that. Almost Poch almost needs like a preseason to help him, um, you know, get all those ideas across. And I think that if Poch does come in halfway through the season, I don't think you're going to see anywhere near uh, what Poch can produce this season. And I think it's going to take for a preseason for him and a few of his own players to come in as well. I do get the feeling Poch might be a better fit though right now. No, I agree. I, I think he will, but. I, all I'm saying is that it's going to take Poch time to implement his ideas, especially coming in mid-season. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I have to agree with that. For Ten Hag's, I mean, four 0 away at Brentford, man, that is diabolical, and they're in serious trouble right now. Yeah, they are.
Um, I mean, you look back at the beginning of last season, everyone was saying Arsenal losing 2 0 there was a big disaster. This has doubled that 4 0. Um, man, you look in a very, very desperate shape at the moment. Um, but look, I'm not going to complain, let's be honest. So let's move on. Uh, let's talk about Nottingham Forest against West Ham. First game on the Sunday. Both of us going for draws 1 1 and 2 2, but it did finish 1 0 to Nottingham Forest. Um, and West Ham not having a good start to the season. Uh, Declan Rice missing a penalty. Yeah. It's costing me Terrible five penalty. points. Costing me five points. But yeah. is what it is. I'll take it. Um, yeah, Forrest, um, I think... I think that uh, looking at the game overall, they'll probably count their lucky stars as they got the 1-0 win. Um, they played well, uh, given the fact that they're a pros a team against a decent side like West Ham, and they were pretty strong. But West Ham, I think, hit the bar twice from Fournells and from Ben Rama. They had a goal chalked off um, for a foul by Antonio, which was a bit of a stupid foul from him, um, uh, which uh, obviously Ben Rama went on and scored. And then, but but ben, they pulled it back because Antonio did a foul off the ball. Um, and it was probably the right decision, but I don't think it was one which materially affected the goal as such. It was just that it was a stupid foul to make off the ball. Um, and so they got a bit lucky there. And then obviously they got lucky with a missed penalty. So I think West Ham be kicked themselves. They didn't get anything out of this game. But yeah, it was that. Two um, lost to City and now Forest. So two uh, defeats on the bounce. Season, haven't have scored. Um, I, I'm taught, you know, we have a family member who's a West Ham fan and he's very unhappy at the moment with how things are going West Ham. I think a lot of West Ham fans are unhappy. Moises seems unhappy as well with Which, the transfer business that has been done. It surprised me because you look at the business like Skamaka in Corne and you're thinking those are decent signings mm. but I don't know maybe they think they need they haven't done anywhere near enough business. When you're looking at last season um, they would have won Europa League if they had a more BP squad in mm. my opinion um, and I think that's what let them down is the kind of no strength in numbers there for West Ham and um, that's what they need going into Europe this season again with the Conference League uh, they want to push for the Europa League as well um, in the Premier League those kind of positions so they need a much more beefier squad if they're going to compete on those levels yeah comp uh, yeah, especially with uh, as you say they're in the Conference League I don't see them have it going deep in that com or com competition and challenging for top six like it has to be one or the other mm, I reckon exactly uh, let's move on to Chelsea against Tottenham at Stamford Bridge. An unbelievable pulsa pulsating game at Stamford Bridge. Both of us going for 2-1 to Spurs. Did finish 2-0. Um, and you know what? It was a really good game of football. We didn't play well at all, to be honest. Chelsea pretty much deserved the win. But you've got to give it credit to Spurs for plugging in there, keeping with the faith and uh, getting that goal right at the end. Yeah, shit housing our way to a point. And um, that's absolutely fantastic when you're going away to Stanford Bridge. I think taking a point off your top six rivals away from home, especially with the last minute goal, has to be seen as a positive. But there will be concerns uh, with the way we played and how easily Chelsea were able to dominate uh, dominate us and how they were um, able to get so many chances off us, especially uh, in the second half. So, um, And they had just to total control in the first half. So that's something we have to work on and something that Conte has to be very wary of. But I think we can also be proud of um, the strength and depth that we had to, to change the game and the spirit and mentality we showed to stay in the game and um, battle, battle for a point and come, come away with a point. So there are definitely positives and negatives for Spurs to take away from that, but um, probably more positives in the end. I think it's positives as well. And I think that our hardest game of the season is out of the way. I look at Stamford Bridge being our hardest ground to go to. Uh, when you're looking at, I know people will be like, oh, what about Liverpool, what about Man City? But I think the, the way those teams play their football plays into our hands a bit more. Um, and I think the way that Chelsea play their football is historically as well. Um, you're looking at probably the hardest game of the season. So I'm happy that one's out the way. And uh, we got, came away with a point as well. So you've got to look at the positives. Uh, but let's move on to the last game of the weekend, which was Monday night football at Anfield. Uh, Liverpool against Crystal Palace, which finished 1-1. Uh, unbelievably, Sim went 3-1 to Liverpool. I went 2-0 to Liverpool and that just wasn't the way it panned out at all. And I was actually disappointed with the way uh, Liverpool played yesterday. They do have a number of injuries. You know, Thiago, Keita was on the bench. Uh, Matip and Canate are out as well. And, um, you know, Liverpool actually had so much of the ball, so much possession, but they just didn't do anything with it. They were just huffing and puffing, getting crosses in the box. Uh, Palace ultimately getting most of them away. And uh, Palace go on and score from a really good break. Um, and, you know, against Liverpool, that's always a danger with the, with the line that they play, especially when they don't have their first choice defence out there with Nat Phillips playing yesterday. Mm. So um, 
unbelievable counter attack and Wilfred Zaha slotting it really well. But once it went, once Liverpool went down to ten men with a stupid headbutt from Darwin Nunez, I thought Liverpool actually looked good and they they could have got that win. Yeah, I think Liverpool will be very, very, very frustrated with how that game this game has gone. I think for the first half they were very dominant and I think they were actually created quite a few chances. They didn't do anything with that dominance though. They really. did. They hit the post. No, Darwin Nunez yeah, hit the post. He know, had some chances. I think Trent was creating chances as well. Salah was a bit on the periphery, but I Salah think they was anonymous. Yesterday. Yeah, I th but I think. Um, I think the stat is if you take the second half of Fulham away and the first half of Palace um, at home, they've conceded two shots in in uh, in in total, and they've both been goals. Mm. So there's got to be a source of frustration that they've only conceded two shots and they've been goals. But look, Palace, to be fair to them, defended really well, and they got, when they got their chance to get forward, and they, and they and they took it, and it was a great finish from Zaha, and he was always a danger, even though uh, you know they didn't really find him up until that one moment. Um, you, you always know if you do find him in on goal, he has the pace to get away from defenders, and he's got a good finish on him, and obviously it was a good goal. Um, the second half came around, and um, Liverpool. Might well have got back in the game quick if it wasn't for stupidity from Nunes as you say I don't know what he's thinking it wasn't even one of those headbutts where it's like he puts his head close to Anderson he proper headbutted him that was like one that will probably hurt tomorrow um, today for Anderson so it's absolute stupidity and a lack it was just naivety and a lack of uh, a cool like he just lost his cool completely Nunes maybe it's because he knew he was uh, Anderson was getting the better of him for most of the game um, that probably um, he's a uh, top player by the way it. Joachim Anderson I love it yeah he had a great first game as well against first Arsenal. game um, and this game I thought he's brilliant uh, ball playing ability strength in the air I mean how good is he with his aerial ability his his um, passing though is fantastic yeah, he's got brilliant. a fantastic I mean, long ball I'm telling you right now I'll take him at Spurs um, mm. to compete with Eric Dyer for that middle spot yeah, he's he's had a really strong start to the season. But then obviously Diaz gets a goal what out of nothing. Goal. What Indi a goal. Individual quality mm. gets him back in it. And if anything, it looked like Liverpool were going to go on to win it. I think Carvalho, Salah all had a couple of chances. But then Zaha does hit the post near the end. So uh, as much as Liverpool... He's got to be doing better from that. Zaha. Yeah, he had to score. So as much as Liverpool might be annoyed they didn't get the win, they all might also be a bit relieved they didn't lose. So mm. two draws to start the season. Is the title gone already? <laughs> no, yeah, with Man City standards, you would never know. Yeah, look, it's it's coming harder for them, but it's not gone just yet. And I think that would now with Nunes out for what's he going to be three, three games, games minimum? And with Jota injured, Firmino injured, like running out of uh, options at the moment. Maybe United do have a chance this weekend. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> but let's move on to the star men. Like I said, it's five points for a goal, three points for an assist. And who can't pick the same man against so the Sims use his Erling Haaland. Yeah, disappointed. Um, he gets three points for that, though, because he did get an assist. But only nine or eight, eight or nine touches throughout the game. What happened with him? Yeah, he just wasn't involved in the build-up. Um, he's just... Well, he is one of those... Maybe that's why City have been so... Um, okay with not having a striker like that because they know whoever they play full sign is going to be very much involved in the in the game and it's not going to have a game where he's got eight or nine touches i think when you're playing against the last defender or you're getting it in the box and trying to be that striker and you and and defenses are crowded it's maybe going to be very very difficult to get that so many touches and maybe that's the problem he's going to maybe um get more joy against teams who um, have a higher line probably so um maybe like when you when he plays liverpool he's going to get more joy but the in these games though, not it was many difficult. teams are going to play such a high line against man City. i know that's why it's going to have to be some adjustment from him i think mm. uh, but he did get an assist and it was a decent assist to be fair to him on gundogan nice through ball so fair play to him for that but um, he'll be also very angry at Foden for not squaring it to him when he could have had a tap in um, mm. and that could have been a golden assist and then it's a different narrative isn't it if that happens but um, but he was uh, what didn't have the best game nothing to worry about uh, to be honest just yet you know he gets a goal uh, in his first game assist in his second game so it keeps up the stats and keeps up the good form. bit annoyed I wasted my Haaland uh, star man on an assist, but it is what it is. <laughs> and I went for Patrick Bamford, um, who went off injured after 20 minutes, which was so frustrating because obviously Leeds uh, scored two goals in the game, probably could have got more if Bamford stayed on the pitch, but um, he goes off injured um, and that's very frustrating, very frustrating. There we go. But, you know, you still got one over me picking Haaland this week. Is that, uh, was Haaland, is that our first star man of the season to get a return? Yeah. 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 There you go. 
All right, cool. Let's uh, move on. Well, that's it. That's it for Predict the Prem and uh, the Spurs perspective this week. We'll be back later on in the week where we predict all the Premier League fixtures for this weekend. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts. Who's going to come out on top this year? Sim is currently four points clear early doors. Uh, we'll see what happens. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.